Incredible. Incredible.
Hey guys, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope you're having a really, really good Tuesday. Oh, just taking my shoes off. I like to stream without shoes on. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, yeah. We're going to do some customer builds today. That's where we're going to start out with. Uh, these are the ones that I should have done last week and haven't got around to yet. So I apologize to those people who are waiting. But we are going to start getting them done. Uh, Superhands got first. He says, yo. Shoeland's here as well. Says, hi, hi, hi. Superhands says, I wasn't attempting to be first, but the notification popped up whilst I was doom scrolling. Hey, it's as good a time as any. Sergio says, sending this from Bodrum in Turkey. Lots of love to the PT crew. Thanks, man. Hope you're having a good time in Turkey. Top G's here as well, so is Karcher. Neodoid says, unexpected stream notification. Yeah, I'm trying to stream a lot more. So, I think consistently we're going to do Tuesdays and Sundays, sorry, Thursdays and Sundays now, and occasionally we'll chuck one in on a Tuesday as well, such as today. Zosko, hey, good to see you. Densis as well. Sipulet's here too. Hey, man, good to see you. Uh, Child Music says, good afternoon, folks. I appreciate the extra streams. Yeah, so we're going to try and do more. Like, I really want to try and like share more of what we do. So that's the plan here, right? Um, GVB, hey man, good to see you. I'm good, thank you very much. It's Tuesday. It's been a busy morning. Um, apart from just shipping orders today, I've been prattling around with some stuff for the new coffee company and some group buy stuff going live. So I was kind of like monitoring like group buy stuff at like from half past five this morning. Um, because as you might have seen, we uh, <laughs> we did put a a, a new group by life, which has proved to be pretty popular, which is uh, a GMK rubber hose. So if you guys like kind of bad Chad art style and 1920s kind of um, uh, ink block cartoons, this might be up for you. Um, but it's been very popular because if you do uh, purchase it, there is uh, a guaranteed option to purchase a Jane. And if you buy two set, well, either a Jane or a Kahaku, if you buy one base kit, you get a guaranteed option to purchase uh, the matching Jane or the matching Kahaku. If you buy two base kits, you get the opportunity to buy both, which is pretty cool. So some people are going to be going nuts over these Janes. This cream one. Cream. Cream keyboards, who the thunk it? But cream TGR, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Look at this shot. Look at this image. Look at that. You can have a key or a or a switch here or or the little um, badge here where F13 would be as well. It's just such a cool set. Just such a cool set. Um, so unironically uh, and unexpectedly, it went a little bit more nuts than I thought it would, and I thought we'd sell a few. Um, it is already, for a day one set, the best selling set PT has ever had. For day one. Um, it just kind of went nuts. Like, the whole website just went nuts. Like, we have this thing where the first um, five people who join a group buy get the shipping for free. Like, we've always done this. Sometimes it's been ten people, but we've always kind of done this. And um, with this set... The site crashed and it gave free shipping to like the first 20 UK orders because like it just couldn't keep up with it and it didn't know how many it had done. Like the, the API that tells it how many it's done couldn't keep up with it. So loads of people got free shipping for this. <sighs> GVB, yeah, I got you, man. Yeah, I know who you are. All hell, Jay. Uh, no, no, don't do not do hell. Like, that just gives me like uh, Third Reich vibes. I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, but I'm wel I welcome that you're here. Uh, v Rugdush, hey man, good to see you. Fe fellow rectangle inspectors. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I keep looking at this particular render and thinking, mm, I need it. So, um, I have already bought my set so that I can buy myself one of these Janes because I don't get these for free, right? I have to buy the keyboards and I kind of want one of these Janes. So, I have already got my order in for the key set. So, if you are interested in getting a guaranteed spot of a Jane or a Kohaku or both, you know what to do because the set is limited as well the key set's limited as well so just saying i'm loving streamer j at the minute thanks man i appreciate that um like i just want to stream more because i like to share what we do in the background with you guys <clears throat> could this be the streamer's equivalent of a butt though no no like, it's really difficult to go live there's like multiple checkboxes to 
actually going live. First of all, I'd have to open a certain set of software. Then I'd have to click go live. Then I'd have to physically type something before it let me click go live, which is like, so it's like a three step process. Um, nice coughing out, I see there. Yeah, I, I'm practicing, guys. I'm practicing. Uh, let's turn the browser share off. I'm practicing. I, I've already taken a big sip out of this, so it's kind of distorted it, but it was looking pretty good. It was looking pretty good earlier on. It's a 14 ounce cup. It's not a huge cup, it's just a 14 ounce one. The extra stream got me to buy a crush, so it's all worth somewhat. Nice. In some parts of the world, this would be a soup bowl. Dude, it's not that big. The new coffee company looks awesome, by the way. Thanks, man. Yeah, we've put, um, like, recently I've just put a change log up there of stuff. Because, like, it's basically in early access now, right? Okay, so on the coffee company website. Um, this is the coffee company website. It's Jay's Roastery. Uh, we were, we've partnered with, like, a local roasting company to um, source certain beans, and they're roasting them for them. They've got a, a nice big roasting setup, so we're using that. Uh, but they're doing these specialty beans for us and us alone um, as, like, a certain group of blends. We've got three so far. We've got the Classics blend, we've got the Fiction blend, and the Sci-Fi blend, depending on what you're looking for a taste out of coffee. Uh, the Fiction blend, for example, um, tasting notes of berries, vanilla, and soft milk chocolate is what I'm drinking right now. Um, and this is already in coffee shops. This is already sold as a house coffee in certain coffee shops is this particular one and it's doing really well um basically if you order it ships next day free shipping within the uk we're working on international shipping for coffee at the minute there's some slight challenges with that but one of the things i've actually done is just at the bottom of the website i have kind of like started to put like a little bit of a change log so here's my coffee from this morning that's literally our machine here in the workshop uh it's a londinium uh one um so like at the minute because i wanted to launch it in early access like a lot of the logos and imagery is is, uh, is produced by ai so we're going to get rid of that and we're going to put in in some actual artwork once it's finished being done. Tim and I are working on the logo. This is me that's slowing it up. Um, and we've got a local artist actually painting some designs that we're going to take some nice photos off, which will become the designs as well. Um, I need to finish off the roadmap on how we are 100% sustainable. That's kind of like a thing that I've been building for a while, and I just need to finish writing it. International shipping options, new product launches as well. Uh, we're going to have the romance line, which is going to be a mocha selection that you'll be able to purchase. Um, and we're working on some signal single origins as well, so much more to come. And I did go down to the roastery the other day, and I recorded this video. Like, the beans in my cup right now are from this video. Like, this is literally what I'm drinking, these specific beans, um, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so I've added all that to the website this morning. Um, we've had a ton of orders from you guys, which has been really supportive over the weekend when we launched on Sunday. And those orders are now starting to ship out today. So, yeah, we actually ran out of uh, the labels and we had to order some more <laughs> because we had more orders than I planned on. So, yeah, that's that's just how it is. Um, so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Right, um, let's catch up with chat. The extra stream, oh yeah, we talked about that. In some parts of the world, there should be a soup bowl. Like, it's not that big of a cup. I think the I think the, the stream camera makes it look bigger than it is. It's just a standard 14-ounce um, cup. Region locked, you believe? Uh, oh, can you get rubber hose from you in the US? So, technically, it, it, I mean, physically, it's not region locked. Like, if you want to buy from us, you can. If you prefer to buy from us than any other vendor, the store won't stop you. I haven't physically limited that, like we do on some things. Um, but if you do have a local vendor, consider using them first and only use us if you if you aren't comfortable with that vendor for whatever reason or if it's cheaper for you where you are or there's some other reason why you'd like to use us that's fine we won't cancel orders just bear in mind that whoever you do buy your base kits from that's who you'll have to go to for the keyboards as well so just bear that in mind um but yeah if you're in the us you're more than welcome to purchase from us i'm not going to penalize people from being anywhere in the world and stop them ordering from us directly i think that's a little bit unfair but i will say do consider your local options um so you know you've got Oblosky in the eu you've got klc um z frontier you know there are well wide options so yeah do consider that but if you want to order from prototypist you can absolutely go ahead and do that so that's fine the cream is super nice dude the cream is super super nice yeah especially actually west uh so is it west clay west clay i'm not sure how you pronounce that but yeah because klc is sold out if you buy from us that's fine like as soon as one of the other vendors sells out in the area if you can't buy it from another vendor 100 percent you can come buy from us but if you can buy it from your local vendor just consider them first and if you still pick us i can understand that um, is the Jane going to be similar to the Monarchy Edition or a bit more like the V2? So, Pork Thief, the Jane actually has um, the 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 Jane actually has a, its its own series of logos on the bottom. Uh, let me open this in a new tab and show you. So you can see here, uh, it's actually got like a rubber hose theming on the base. Um, so yeah, it it's kind of like its own its own thing. 
Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. The mic's clipping, is it? Hmm, I wonder why that's doing that. It doesn't usually, I haven't changed, oh. For some reason, the mic seems more sensitive today. I don't know why, it's at the same position as always. Hopefully that's fixed anyway. Should be an XMI set instead so that you can use that Comic Sans font, no. <laughs> Yeah, I fixed the mic. I don't know why it was clipping. That's so weird. Like, it never clips. Nothing's changed on it either. Tasty, tasty. MTP, thank you so much for the uh, subscription. Rubber hose hype. Nice. Beige or grey? Beige. The key set is phenomenal value. So the thing with the key set this time around is we had to commit to such a high MOQ across all of the vendors to get this price. And bear in mind that it is like, this is what the retail price is going to be. It's going to be 175 quid, including VAT, which is 105.83x VAT. So right now it's 145 pounds. Um, but the base kit is massive. Oh, the other thing as well is what it doesn't show on the Nord UK kit. Um, is it doesn't show the blue versions of the three keys at the top. So the uh, the first three keys here, the UK ones, uh, the, uh, the the back tick, the two with the apostrophes and the three with the pound sign, there will be blue versions of these. I had that confirmed by Mario at GMK today. So there will be blue versions of those if you want to uh, use the uh, alert row that you can see along the bottom here, if you want to use that, there will be UK keys for that in the Nordic UK kit. So Mario confirmed that earlier on today, um, and I did offer to pay for them and they said, no, we'll just add them for free. So I'm not going to stop them. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I was pretty happy with that. Do I prefer the beige versus the gradient? Yeah, I prefer the beige. I really like beige. How's the Audi, Jane? Still loving it? Yeah, the Audi's great. Um, the Audi is like a fantastic daily driver. Um, but I still love my other cars more, the classics. <clears throat> Mike's a bit peaky. Yeah, if it should be better now. It should be better. Jay, do you know how many rubber hose will be made? I do, but I can't tell you. Like, there is like a soft limit that vendors are allowed to sell during the group buy window, and then we might have some more in stock later on. Um, I can't tell you the overall number. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, I can't tell you the overall number, but it is split by vendor, and it is limited. Like, during the group buy period, the group buy might end if you, if you guys buy enough to hit our target, and we're over halfway sold. So just bear that in mind. Like, if you want to get in on this, I'd advise to do it today, because they might not be here by the end of the week. So, yeah. Uh, Godzilla Waddle. I assume any delay is you making a coffee before streaming. Yeah, so I usually start the timer about five minutes before I actually plan to be live. Um, and usually that invariably ends up like being on the starting screen, soon screen for about 10 minutes. And that's because I'm making a coffee. And I usually make like a glass of squash as well, just so I have like a uh, another drink too. So, yeah. For a variation on the sci-fi coffee, consider Streampunk. I like that. I might steal it. Uh, did you buy the domain with the roastery misspelling as a redirect? No, no. So it's Roast Story. It's Jay's Roast Story. If you look at the the, uh, the coffees, they're themed around different types of writing. So uh, you've got fiction, you've got classics, you've got sci-fi. So it's Roast Story. The idea is that we were gonna. I wanted to theme it around sitting down with a nice cup of coffee, reading a book, reading something, uh, being immersed in some sort of world and having that solitude. Like one of my favorite things is to go to a coffee shop on a rainy day and sit down with a cup and read a book. And I don't get to do that often enough, but that's kind of what the whole theme was about. So it's the Roast Story. It's a story that the coffee's telling you as well. That's kind of like the idea behind it, the theme behind it. Um, so yeah, so it, it is Jay's row story. It says that in the in the logo. It says that on the invoices when you buy from us and all of that kind of stuff as well. Uh, a fresh hey man, good to see. You. Is the Audi on Instagram? What model? Uh, it's an Audi RS4. Um, so yeah. So yeah, that's it. Hoping, I hope saying champ to a 40 year is fine. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, Jay. Hey, man, Lazy Keiko. Good to see you. I did think the mic was a little loud, but I'm using my IEMs today. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Like, um, I use the same mic. It's the Rode NT. I've been using the same mic for five or six years streaming now. Um, usually I have to turn it right up because the software turns it down. I haven't changed anything on the PC setup. I haven't. Um, actually, Streamlabs did an update yesterday. Maybe it's a Streamlabs issue. Um, anyway, it should be fixed now. It should be fixed. Ungodly. Afternoon, Jay, in chat. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Yeah. Uh, Vivrug Dush says, only for the UK ones. I'm not sure if there's any Nordic UK. 
Norda keys in the Norda UK set that need to be row one blue. I know there's just the UK ISO one set. That was all my level of expertise leads to on a Norda UK set. Um, so yeah, so Mario just confirmed those. A Blotsky might have a chat with a Mario if there's a, a, an issue there as well. I thought something happened to my AMs. Yeah, it, it seems like it's just my, my stream. I don't know why. It must be a, a Streamlab setup thing um, that's changed. Such an easy purchase. Nice, yeah. KLC had 800 sets, apparently. That's not true. Um, how many vendors are there? There are a few worldwide. The blue numero uh, for UK keys makes it a massive consideration. Yeah, yeah like it, it was something that I spotted a couple of days ago. We did talk about it, but GMK have this new fixed international kit, their, their new standard Nordi um, UK kit, which allows us to sell at a cheaper price. Like if you look on the website, it's it's considerably cheaper than um, than other Nordi UK kits because um, it's like. Thirty-five pounds excluding VAT and forty-two pounds including VAT. It's so cheap compared to the average Norda kit. But um, in fact, actually, it might be just those four keys on the row one there. Look, actually, oh, maybe it needs all these as well. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I've just asked for what I know I need for UK ISO, which is those three at the top. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see what Mario comes back with. Um, a Blotsky will be looking into it as well. Anyway, so yeah. Um, it's it's GMK's new standard kitting for a Nord UK kit, which means that they can pump them out at a certain price point. Um, we're not allowed to make profit on them; we have to sell them at cost. But that's the only rule, and yeah, um, that's why it's it was a fixed Incredible. kit originally. So yeah. <clears throat> Just a question. If I bought GMK rubber ho hose extras in Q4, do I still qualify for the keyboard purchase? No, the keyboards will only be grouped by. There won't be any extras in stock. You have to buy the into the group by the key set to get a guaranteed slot on the keyboard. That's how it works. I know I, I know what it is, but people uh, misspell domains when they are thinking about it. Also, so no one makes a parody thing if they have to have a good grievance. Yeah, no, I haven't thought about that. Um, I'm sure there are other Jay's Roastery URLs I don't own. Those are the prototypist URLs I don't own. Um, but yeah, like it, it was, it, there's just, there's Jay's Roastory.net and Jay's Roastory.co.uk, I think that I own. Um, I'm only set up on the .co.uk. I think the other one redirects to the .co.uk. But it is about a year since I set it up, so I couldn't exactly tell you. Don't forget to build board today. Yes, we are going to. We are gonna um like six colors reads direct to six colors yeah okay i know what you mean yeah yeah no when i was at just giving we had so many domains to protect us yeah <clears throat> fair enough i'll have to look up myself if there are more blue caps i don't know 42 pounds is much more oh go on then for an international kit than 65 to 70. yeah and this is a whole point i raised it with jim k ages ago so we've been doing the uh, UK ISO free kits for KKB sets for a little while now and I said to GMK at the time can we do the same with GMK or can we do something similar like where they're only like 10 12 quid or something where it's you know UK keys for 10 quid I think that's a bargain um, GMK were like no but we do have something planned and this is what they had planned a standardized not a UK kit that they can produce in bulk at certain MOQs with a much lower price and the only rule is vendors don't make a profit on it so yeah yeah so that's that right okay we are going to build some keyboards today if you guys have got any questions about anything at all then do let me know but um if you do want to get in on those jane's or kahakus uh, i can't show you the kahaku design yet because it's not finished you're gonna have to buy rubber hose and i'm pretty sure where uh in fact i'm gonna have a look and not 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 tell you but i'll i'll tell you the rough percent percentage of how far sold out we are right now um let me have a look just so you can kind of like stay informed uh created newest first let's have a look okay so we are about 60 percent sold there's rough percentage just based on some back of the pad math yeah we're about 60 percent sold so work with kkb next time i mean this this isn't my this isn't my set this is just this is a set that's designed by bad chad the designer picks the manufacturer for that we all of the vendors have to go in on it and whilst we do do work a lot with kkb um we can't run every key set with them because then that just clog up their timelines and some people prefer gmk still so 
you know, like like when we offer the keys, the the UK kits for free, I think what what's missed on a lot of people is like I still have to pay for them. Like I still have to buy them. I just want to give them to you guys for free because I think that's the right thing to do. No other vendor gets involved in buying them, just us. And we have this one kit produced basically for every base kit that we order with KKB. Um, but we have to pay for them and we don't charge the customer for it. Like if you look at the base kit price, we don't eat up, lift the base kit price compared to the other vendors just to accommodate the extra keys. We just we just buy them and give them to you guys for free. Um, because I think it's the right thing to do. So like if, if it was other vendors with KKB that, or if we did a full Nordic kit or something like that, there would be a cost and we would have to charge it for them. But where it's just the UK ISO keys, we can do it for free. Does that mean they've just now set up a template and sort for the international kit? No, they've, they've stood it slightly differently. Um, I, I'm not sure how much detail I can go into, but they, they, they basically have a better way of processing it. So the, if you ever buy GMK, um, I don't have a GMK set to hand, but you get like the full GMK box and then you get the smaller ones with just the, just the plastic on where it's just like a few keys. Those ones that are just like covered in plastic and it's just a few keys, they're all done by hand. That's not done in their, their sorting machine. They're literally all done by hand. So they're still doing these by hand, but it should work out better. I do wish I did it years ago. Yeah, I, so do I, but JQ, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? Like we've got them to agree to do this and it's a good step. And whether the time, you know, the, the, the best time to do something was three years ago. The second best time to do it is right now. Um, so, you know, it's there. This rubber hose is giving nice PBT pillow with the color scheme and the novelties. Um, so, rubber, well, the rubber hose stuff is being color matched to the DCS version, uh, which ran a couple of years back now. Um, Deadbeats, DCS Deadbeats. So, it, it it's not based on the Palo set. Um, I think that ran before Palo ran, but it's all, of course, based on the original vintage key sets as well. So, yeah. Is there a time frame for when the Jane and Kahaka group buy will happen? Nothing set in so stone, but it won't be too far away. I think about maybe a month, maybe a little bit longer for the Jane, maybe a month and a half for the Kahaku. Um, but if you only buy one base kit and then you buy the Jane, you can't buy the Kahaku. Uh, if you buy two base kits, then you buy a Jane, you can buy the Kahaku. Or if you buy one base kit, don't buy the Jane, then you can buy the Kahaku. I hope that makes sense. Just go back from lunch to find me on. Yeah, we're gonna build a customer's keyboard in a second. I'm just gonna finish my coffee and then we'll start building a customer's keyboard. Um, this is actually Will's keyboard. I know I was going to do it last week, and I'm so sorry, Will, that I didn't get to it. But I do have it literally out on the desk next to me. Um, oh, my, my DMs are going nuts at the minute. Why, why are my DMs going nuts? Oh, okay, so I'm just getting some updates on rubber hose. That's what's happening. Uh, yeah, KLC US and Korea is all sold out. Yeah, China is also sold out. So yeah, um, if you want to buy from us and you're in one of those areas, buy from us. That's pretty much how it goes right now. Um, so yeah, just remember if you do buy from us, we don't refund group buys. That's the policy. So yeah, just bear that in mind. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's get on with the keyboard build. Uh, oh, actually, you guys have come up with some quality chat. The quality of other cheaper Cherry Profile keycaps is constantly improving. How long do you think GMK combine, uh, con continue to rest on their laurels as the de facto standard? I couldn't get my words out there. How long do you think GMK can continue to rest on their laurels as the de facto standard? I don't think they are the de facto standard for key sets in general, but they are for Cherry Profile. I mean, they own the original Cherry Molds. Any, literally, the, the, the definition of that is that any other person who makes Cherry keycaps is making clones of the GMK keycaps, right? Um, so I think they, they, they own the standard. That's the, that's the fact. They own the standard for double short Cherry Profile keycaps um, because they bought the machines from Cherry back in 2011. So GMK owns that. Um, in terms of like the quality of what they put out, it is consistently of a higher quality than other companies. We have more issues like replacing keys with KKB and other companies, PBT fans and things like that. Things that have been missed by QC at the uh, those other manufacturers and we have to send out replacements. We have far more with those 
uh, companies than we do with GMK. Of course, we'll always fix it. Um, so I think that's another thing in their favor. And the for me, where, where, where GMK needs to change is they need to realize that other companies are kind of like beating some of the punch on pricing. That's something that GMK absolutely needs to address. The price is high. Um, but then again, it's made in Germany with all of the German controls around it and the cost of living in Germany, etc., compared to the cost of producing in China, which is significantly cheaper. You know, KKB produced in China, the rates that they pay their staff per hour will be considerably different to what GMK has to pay their staff in Germany. And the amount of controls that are in, restrictions that are in place in Germany and licenses and everything else that you have to pay for and how to produce plastics, it's going to mean that there is a higher cost. Whether that means you know, GMK should move production to China or not is a different question. I don't think they ever will, but it is part of the consideration. Um, and plus, GMK have worked with the community for, you know, a long time. So I think that GMK does need to evolve, does need to change. That's why they've started doing things like this new Nordic kit. They've started doing things like the mixed material keycaps, uh, where you can have like the patterns flowing through them and stuff. They have started to do MT New, which is their new profile, working with Mateo, uh, which has been selling really well. You know, they are trying to innovate, they are trying to change. I think the one thing that everyone would want them to change on, which they'll struggle with, is cost. Because producing stuff in Germany is just inherently more expensive. That's just a fact. Um, so yeah. Selling faster than GMK Beloved. Yeah, we've sold more rubber hose in the first two minutes than we had of whole group buy and in stock of Beloved. Are there more MT new sets coming in? Yeah, always. Gonna be getting a bunch of international orders this afternoon, maybe. Uh, we can order from Canada, not hard region locked. No, it's not hard region locked because in case other regions sold out and it seems like the US vendor, which uh, would have been for you in Canada, has sold out, you can order from us, Shy Lakutas. Yeah. Jim K is at least trying new things such as with MT New and the new typeface for uh, Sil. Yeah, I mean, typefaces for 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 the Cherry profile, um, You could, anyone can go and do that. You can create a new you know, font if you want or whatever um, and have that produced. You just have to pay for the molds. It's as simple as that. GMK are the only ones who have their molds and machines as far as I know. It's impossible to clone to the same standard. Yeah, so GMK bought the machines off Cherry, and I've seen these machines working. Um, they're, uh, and it's not just the machines. Anyone can go buy the machines. They're, they're made by a company called Boy, B-O-Y. Um, but the um, like the molds is where it comes into it, right? The original molds and the original specifications and the original technical drawings, that's what Cherry also sold to GMK. So, yeah. Did you hear about the rumor that KKB staff left over the Lunar New Year and abandoned the warehouse without notice? Um, so this is... This is I, so, as someone who has worked a lot with China, this is kind of quite common in China. Um, so for those of you who don't know, in China, Lunar New Year is basically their biggest festival of the year. Everyone, Everything shuts down for two weeks, everyone goes home. And most people who work in China work in like, you know, Shenzhen or Guangdong or one of these other large populated areas but a lot of them come from villages out in the middle of nowhere so they they spend a day and a half two days traveling home they spend two weeks at home they spend a day and a half two weeks traveling back it is really really common for during that two week period for people to find another job at another factory or another position or another opportunity and not go back to their original job so workers will leave and then you might get you know you might get all your workers back you might get 90 percent of your workers back you might get 50% of your workers back. This has affected a number of manufacturers over the year. It happened to DDS about five years ago, just before they took off and became really popular. Uh, it's happened to quite a few other pe uh, manufacturers as well. Um, so hearing that about KKB doesn't surprise me. That's just kind of part and parcel of Chinese culture that sometimes man manufacturers and employers know that not all of their staff may come back because they might go on to something different. Um, so yeah, so you just need to bear that in mind. Overall, EU is way more stringent in comparison to what is produced elsewhere in the world, so it'll always be a little bit more expensive no matter what. Yeah, and I think the partial part of this is GMK should lean into that. You know, it's it's German engineering. Like we hear this in car manufacturing all the time, German engineering and all of that, but we never really attribute that kind of stuff to GMK, and we really should. We really should. I wish GMK was cheaper than I would buy. I just can't force myself to pay that much when I can get cheaper, even if it's PBT. Yeah. Which keyboard is the start today? Uh, the one I'm using on my desk is my TGR Koala. Is there an international set for KKB Signet? No, not as far as I'm aware. I think it's got a couple of UK keys in, in the base kit. Let's have a look. Let's 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 have a look. So you want to have a look at KKB Signet. Oh, it was already there. 
Um, let's have a look. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so we have UK ISO keys here. We have the other ISO keys there, and uh, it has UK ISO in base. It does not have international keys if you need an order set. It only has UK ISO in base. It's a really interesting base kit, actually, because it's basically ANSI with three key 40s and UK ISO instead of terminal ISO. It's an interesting base kit. But yeah, UK ISO in base. And how much is that? £109. Should we give a discount on this? Should we put a discount on it? Um, let's, let's, let's put a discount on it. Because I think that's a little bit expensive for Signet. Um, what did we do for the pre-order price? Oh yeah, let's make it uh, let's let's make it match the pre-order price. Doop, 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 doop. Right, that should be done. He says, come on. Come on. I'm waiting for the change to just like track through now. Tasty, Hold tasty. On. Let's, do it. Let's do it again. Let's reload the website. There you go. It's now £95 instead of £109. Job done. <laughs> That's probably a fairer price for it. Um, super interesting. Yeah, it's just part of the Chinese culture, MTP, sometimes. Um, I do not like the colour. That's fine. Don't forget you get all of the accents and novelties as well for the price. You do, yeah, you do. Um, it looks much better in person. Yes, it does. Yeah, oh, I for yeah, I forgot to I forgot to show that, actually. Yeah, so you, you, you do get all of this, but you also get all of these keys, and you also get all of these keys as well. So like it's it's like all three kits in one base kit. Like that's the whole base kit. It's those three sets for ninety five quid. I think that's a bargain. That's that's a bargain. I think right. In fact, it's like seventy nine pounds if you're not in the UK. Longest I've subbed to anyone as usually don't watch Twitch. Uh, two months, ungodly. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you so much. Any plans for a GMK Midnight Rainbow rerun? Yeah, so we had some quotes a little while back um, for GMK Midnight Rainbow, and I wasn't particularly happy with them. We looked at doing it MT New as well, and it was pretty expensive, but I do want to... But I want to do it as, like, have it already bought and paid for, and then you guys can pre-order it rather than just do a group buy for it. Um... And I haven't spoken to any worldwide vendors either about whether they'd want to stock it or not. Because last time we did it, I didn't like, I didn't make any profit out of it. There was no designer royalty for the whole set, and um, I'm in a fine. I'm in a very different personal financial position to what I was back then. So this time there would have to be some sort of personal design element uh, of a royalty for it. Not much. I'm talking like probably like three or four dollars a set, like a tiny amount. Um, so yeah, so that's another consideration. Um, I just need to get some revised quotes um decide on whether we're going to do it as just sill or empty new or both uh decide how many i can commit to and then see where the gmk quotes come in and see what other vendors want to do as well like if it's just in gmk cyl profile i can probably buy that out myself to um 250 moq but then it's a case of is there you know market in the uk for 250 probably not so we need some international vendors so we'll see we'll see that's some great king. Yeah. Looks very nez. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does actually. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Should we should we actually build a keyboard today then? Because we were supposed to do it last Thursday and we never got around to it. Let me finish the coffee. This is such good coffee. It's just so nice. <laughs> Go buy some. Wish GM key was cheaper too. I bet they could be if they wanted to be, but they know what they're worth. That being said, it's like 500 bucks into complete McMahon set with Hebe and DFR stands plus Desmat. Um, yeah, I've just said we're going to build and now I'm going to come back and see the camera. Um, GMK could probably get a little bit cheaper. Like they're not making like, 
you know fifty dollars per base kit or something. They're just not. Like I, I did do a breakdown of group by costs the other week, and the cost to us, I think, uh, on the particular one was something like eighty nine euros before shipping to the UK and before VAT and taxes and import duties and everything else. And I think our retail price was like one hundred and nine quid. So when you work it out, we were making like three pound profit per base set. Um, you can go back and you can find that stream. It was uh, a couple of weeks ago, one Thursday. Um, so yeah, it's like it, it, it's not like Jim K making tons of profit within that price. They're probably only making you know ten or fifteen percent, which is lower than most businesses do. Like if you run a business generally and you want to get like a business loan and stuff like that, realistically your margin needs to be somewhere in the region of thirty to fifty percent. And if you can't meet that margin, you will not get the financial backing that you need. In keyboards, like PT's profit margin is probably less than five percent overall. And from that 5%, we've got to pay rent, we've got to pay utilities, we've got to pay staff, we've got to pay everything. And it, it's tough, it's really hard. Like, there is not much margin in custom keyboard projects. There just isn't. Um, the, the, there is slightly more margin on, like, the keyboards than there, than there are the key sets. And that's just because of uh, economies of scale, right? If you've got, if you sell 100 of something that cost $500 each, well, you know, you, you need to be making... If you have one that goes wrong, if you have 1% failure rate, so you have one that goes wrong for every 100, you need to make sure that you've got a spare $500 to cover the cost of that one, right? At a basic level, which means you need $5 profit per one. Um, and then you scale that up and you realize that you might bring, you know, a couple of hundred and the failure rate is never 1%. It's probably closer to 12% on keyboard, something like that. You've got to make sure that you're actually breaking even. Um, so the margins on on keyboards that go well and don't have issues are significantly greater than keyboard sets that or where keyboards have issues and we have to resurface finish or whatever uh, stuff um, and key sets are generally a lower margin as well just because there is less to cover if things go wrong so you 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 can basically so so you've you got two things when you're talking about profit margin here and you base it on an element of risk so you say right if we if we take on this risk as part of our profit margin um it means that if this risk comes to fruition this risk happens so that might be i don't know like the the 50 of keyboards fail qc and you build that into your profit margin you can say well if this happens we lose 90 percent of our profit margin but we still make um 10% of our profit margin and our profit margin was 50%. Therefore, we still make 5% of the overall product, right? Um, but then if everything goes to plan, we'll make uh, we'll make 50% of the product margin because that's the whole amount that we've, uh, we've, we've attributed. We'll make an extra 45 pounds per one. So you kind of have to balance it and say, you put what keyboard vendors do is we, we put all of our risk into the, into the profit margin. So if things go wrong, we'll either break even or make a small loss on average. But if things go right, then that's where we get rewarded and that because we make the profit margin now over the whole business that average is at about five percent key sets for most key sets that don't sell in the thousands it's about three percent for key sets that do sell in the thousands it can be as high as 10 or 12 percent um switches we make like a penny a switch on so it's like nothing um i don't even think the profit margin on switches covers the staff time to count them like the people who can sell switches and make money are the people who do it from the bedrooms you know people who do it on a small business level who don't need to be vat registered don't need to pay an accountant don't need to pay staff don't need to pay pensions pots and you know all of that kind of stuff insurances and everything else like like our insurance bill just just for staff liabilities like eight grand a year and it's 16 grand a year when you could take into consideration that we have to have people with driver's licenses and car insurance for the business to drive things around and do products drop-offs and go to ups or go to royal mail or whatever it is um so like all of those costs become part of that so yeah do you think this is particular PT or applies to other vendors as well? The approximately 5% profit. So it depends like where you are in the world. Uh, because of the way we are taxed here in the UK, we we make less profit than other vendors would do worldwide. So our costs are more because we have not just the rent for the property, but we also have business rates. Now our business rates are £11,000 a year for this property, which is just basically council tax for your business. And it's insane. It's insane. It's based on 50% of your rent that's what it is here where the workshop is 50 percent of the cost of our rent i have to pay every year to the council for nothing i still have to pay water i still have to pay utilities i still have to pay build buildings insurance i still have to pay contents insurance and the other thing as well is like in the us you have less 
there, there, there is less of a barrier to entry for businesses because you don't have to have employee liability insurance. I mean, if your employee employee gets hurt, then you potentially screwed, but you can take that risk, right? That's an element of risk and your risk appetite will change that. So here in the UK, it's a mandatory requirement. We've got to have it. In the US, you don't have to have it. You can choose to take that risk. And if someone hurts themselves at work, you may lose out, but if they don't, you'll be fine. Um, so it's the same thing there. We've also got to have uh, customer liability insurance. So if something went really badly wrong and I don't know, a customer picked up a keyboard and got like like struck by, like enough power came out of the keyboard to so they have been struck by lightning, we have to have insurance for that. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. Like the, the, the cost of doing business here in the UK is just so expensive, so expensive. So, yeah. That's the point. Was under the assumption they made the usual 30%. Don't know. Yeah. Hey, Jay, will you be getting a proto of the Neo Ergot build? I am. Yes, I, I was talking about that yesterday. Sharon's picking the color for me. So I don't know what color we're getting, but we will be getting them in. Imagine we include a case like MyKeyboard.eu into the re risk calculation. 300 set. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to talk about that, if I'm honest. I really don't. What to do with products that are defected and not liable to be sold? Um, what do we do? They, they get recycled or binned if we can't recycle them. Um, we probably lose maybe 300 key sets a year to that. Um, maybe 50 keyboards, something like that. Um, lots of PCBs at DOA. We just have to recycle them because there's nothing else we can do. Um, why the UK high street is dead? Business rates? Dude, like, do you know what the stupid thing is? If we opened a small shop here at PT and we had like an element of where you could come in uh, and you could physically browse stuff and buy stuff 50% discount on your business rates 50% so instead of being 11 grand a year it'd be five and a half grand a year just because you can come in and you can browse something but because we don't have that functionality we can't do it and stupidly the insurance cost of having a customer browsing area is more than the cost saving of taking it off the business rates so there's no point in us doing it anyway to save on the business rates it is diabolically hard to make a good business here in the UK in the keyboard market it is so difficult it's so difficult and this is why stuff like Captus really 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 yanks my chain because they, they basically just cost me tens of thousands of dollars for a tiny tiny bit of goodwill and in fact we had more complaints about us fulfilling Captus's orders than we did goodwill from captain's orders like it's just it's just nuts it's just nuts like people are actually complaining there was one guy who came into the discord server and said i don't like that you are fulfilling captain's orders i'm like okay i mean the choices we had was to fulfill them or not fulfill them and we chose to fulfill them to make sure customers got what they bought for what they paid for and he was like i would rather you didn't do that i'm like why because i don't trust you so you don't trust that i'm giving them something that they paid another company for for free I just, it, it's just like, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I mean, that's what meetups are for, uh, Godzilla Waddle. Uh, you can come to the meetup and you can, you can try stuff out. So, yeah. Looking forward to the Neo Ergo build. Yeah, as soon as it comes in, we'll, we'll build it on stream. Um, it shouldn't be too far away. You trust me with your life i think i think you are that that's that's way too risky that's way too risky you'll be entering that group by liz yeah cool it's a good choice have i ever got into a legal battle with a supplier or manufacturer are we just going to end up doing a just chatting stream when i've got a keyboard to build right like right you've got five minutes to put your questions in and we'll go through them because i've been streaming nearly an hour now um and then we're going to do the keyboard build, right? <laughs> so five minutes, get your questions in now. And then on the hour, we're going to start the keyboard build. Um, have we got an into a legal battle with a supplier or manufacturer? Uh, not with a supplier or manufacturer. <sighs> there is a debate whether I go through a legal issue with Captus keycaps or not. The problem is they have no money. So if I go through a legal battle with them to try and get what they owe me the tens of thousands of dollars they owe me it will probably cost me five or six thousand pounds to do that just in legal fees and because they have no money then i won't get paid anything so it will be a case of spending more good money after bad money and there is the whole sunk cost fallacy about forging on and whatever like i just don't see the point yeah i've written off the fact that i've lost tens of thousands of dollars 
And it'd be really, really nice to go and get my money back. Don't get me wrong. Even if I only got 50% of it back, great. But the the cost of doing that when I won't get anything because they have no money, like what am I going to force the guy to do? Ultimately, to, to repay my business, I'm going to end up bankrupting the guy. So it's going to be a case of putting a lien on his house if he owns a house, uh, maybe his car if he's got a car, any nice belongings he has. That's going to put his marriage and his children's lives under strain. I don't want to do that. I don't want to make people homeless. Um, you know, there's kind of like a whole moralistic kind of side of it as well there. I don't even know if he owns a house. If he doesn't own a house, I've got no chance. Like, he's not going to have enough assets to pay me back what he has. So, yeah, I just, it just doesn't make sense. <sighs> Speaking of proto builds, will you be getting a Crush 65? I don't think I'll be getting one before we get the group buy ones in. No, they did ask me. And because, like, I just said no because other streamers had them. So, yeah. Um, don't forget we've got new emotes as well. Um, we have got the, the the whole raft of new emotes as well. Um, there's some that are... Um, SPC only. So if you're a subscriber, you can use those ones, but not everyone. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Can we do the keyboard build, please? Yeah, we can do. It's like an operational cost. Uh, not much you can do. So it, it's a risk cost. Everything that we do as a business has an element of risk built into it. And what we have to do is we have to plan and assign capital to those risks. If those risks come to fruition, then that capital gets used on them. If not, they may be an opportunity to generate more profit, as we talked about before. Um, and we build that generally into our profit margin. Um, and we say, if this risk occurs, which just means we make less money or we break even. If this risk doesn't occur, that's when we take the benefit of having the risk cost. So, yeah. It's, it's an interesting one, but it's difficult. So just think about the overheads you were talking about. What's the deal with the CE and UKCA mark? What are the rules on selling things that aren't certified? Do any products need certification? Yeah, PCBs do, and we already have that in the bag. Um, like the, the manufacturers for PCBs can already do all the CE certification, make sure it's up to that standard. So when we buy a PCB from us, that's already done and taken care of. Um, I think it only applies to electrical equipment. So, yeah, but our accountant is really, really hot on that kind of stuff. And they basically go through all of the products and say, this is what it needs to comply with. Manufacturers are really good as well. So, of course, anything that GMK need us to do, for example, uh, such as putting like um, stickers on, say, small parts for children and blah, blah, blah. It's already done straight from the manufacturer um, because they're aware of what their requirements are to sell around the world. They, this, that's their bread and butter, right? So I'm not an expert in it by any way shape or means uh pcb designers generally are and they will be aware of what they need to do for each region and they can come up with something i know yanka has uh, he's very very good at that kind of stuff um but the manufacturers themselves also are aware and they say right if you're selling in this market we know that you need this and this is the cost to do that and we go okay tick the box and it gets done so yeah we try and we try and work it how do I get back to SPC in the Discord? Uh, link your, go into your uh, Discord settings and link your Twitch to your Discord. Yeah, if it doesn't happen automatically after like 24 hours, then if you just tag uh, one of the mods, they'll, they'll add you. There's going to be new traceability loads coming into the EU in the next few years, supposedly, which will be fun. Yeah, I have looked at this. I don't know if we're going to adopt them here in the UK, um, but the EU stuff is, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult the, the, because the issue is as well, we're, we're selling in a retail setting projects that are basically for some designers, they're just ad hoc off the side of the desk projects and we're selling them as a retail product and it hasn't gone through all of that route to retail path. And I suspect that what that'll mean is that because this won't affect just UK vendors or just EU vendors, it'll be all the other vendors that sell to those areas as well. I think what will happen is if those laws do come in, the costs will either be significantly higher in the UK and EU to get these products, or alternatively, you'll have to buy them outside of the EU, and then those vendors that are large will have to do it because they'll be bigger. Um, specifically, like in in terms of like large scale manufacturing in the hobby, I don't know how it's going to go. It's going to be difficult though because there's, there's just no cost margin left to attribute to those new um, overheads, and if if you can't make it stack up from a cost perspective. You can't make it viable. You can't make a business. Like businesses have to make money, and, and everyone forgets this. People think profit is a dirty word. It is absolutely not, because profit is the lifeblood of a company. Cash flow is well, prof, profit is the veins of the company. Cash flow is the uh, is the blood of the company. This is the way you need to think about it. And you, if you don't have cash flow, 
you'll have a heart attack and die and just fall over. Cash flow is king in that sort of respect. But if you can't have the, the, the capillaries and the, the, the veins and everything else leading the blood to the right areas of the business, you ain't going to last. And that's, that's where you take your risk costs into consideration and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, profit isn't a day word. It's required. Prof profit is literally how you funnel different costs into different parts of the business. And if you can't do that, then you can't improve. You can't bring new products to market. You can't do new things. You can't employ new people. You can't expand. You can't, you can't do anything. You can't build, we can't fix the website. You can't do this or that or the other, you know, profit enables us to do all of those things like just here in the uk we have to pay uh minimum we pay more than minimum wage anyway here at pt but like realistically we'd have to pay minimum wage if we wanted to do it as cheap as possible pay someone minimum wage um pay for their um insurance uh we'd have to pay for their pension um and all of the stuff that comes with that and we'd have to pay for the accountants to cover all of that and we have to pay the government to do the paye stuff and then there's a charge for the paye stuff as well um there's the systems that you need to be able to do that with and track time and hours and all of that means that the average cost even if you pay someone minimum wage the average cost of employing someone is about 20 quid an hour if you pay them minimum wage here in the uk um at least based on what i've seen and that is a lot of money that's a lot of money. If you're only making three three dollars per three pounds per key set, and you've got to make you know twenty pounds per hour per employee, and you've got you've got one employee, then you have to be selling like eight key sets an hour just 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 to break even on that employee costs. Never mind your rent costs or your tax costs or anything else. So, yeah. Right, last couple of questions then here and we'll talk about it. For the EU, the majority of things that regard PCBs can be inherited through FCC. Yes, they can. For the most part, CE is a self-certification that only requires a third-party lab certification for ROHS. Yes. If you certify for part 15 of the FCC, you can reuse those data in your public records of CE in case you have RF designs in place and you need CE RED, which is its certification and can't inherit documentation from FCC or other bodies. Okay, so Cipula, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. That's That was somewhere locked in the back of my mind. You, I agree with it. I'm just not an expert, so I leave it to the experts. If you design properly and pass FCC, then it's basically guaranteed to pass the other regions. Career is a more strict one. Uh, the real pain is the key one. Yeah, I mean, like we, we just let the PCB manufacturers handle it because they're really good at it. We say we need to be compliant for these areas and they know what we need to do and they will tell us if the design's wrong. So, like that's if you're making three quid profit per one, right? Like, And that's just, you know, like cost employees are expensive they're really really expensive and but like and that's if you pay them minimum wage and um, i would never do that so yeah right let's uh, let's look at this keyboard today because my coffee's now gone cold rue makes a good point here so Oh, I do want to talk about this. I do want to talk about this. So Rue. Rue says, I'm under the impression that some members of the community don't see with good eyes a vendor's making profits. I wonder if it's related to how the mechanical community was formed, mechanical keyboard community was formed, and a time when there was no or just a few vendors, if that was the case. You hit the nail on the head here. So historically, uh, before vendors were a thing, all of these group by projects were run by individuals in their garages, their workshops, their spare bedrooms, their kitchens to make and sell a few products right like the back then I think the, the original gmk hyperfuse group by in 2016 or whatever it was uh one guy in the uk ran it and shipped them all worldwide out of his kitchen like he posted pictures of him in his kitchen it was called bunny lake uh, and he still has keys missing but anyway that's a different story um so that's how it started and because they were selling they were buying them at cost they didn't have business overheads or anything else so they all they invested was their time um or broadly just their time and the the view then was that yeah the designer needs to get paid a little bit for their time and whoever's packing the order should get a little bit for their time maybe a free key set or something like they should get one of the key set for free for doing it or whatever and the, the this has kind of like grown and when i started pt there was a lot of people i called friends at the time who disagreed me with me starting a commute like a company to do it and the reason i started a company is because we'd sold a ton of products uh the hyper sevens prior to me registering pt and I wasn't comfortable with that amount of money coming through my personal bank accounts. Um, 
at the time I was earning really good money at a uh, financial institution and I was already in the highest tax bracket in the UK at the time and I was paying a ton of tax but of course then it looked like I had this other amount of income and my tax bill that year increased and I got a tax bill off the off the uh, HMRC uh, at the end of the tax year saying oh actually we see that you've actually had this as well uh, naughty boy you now owe us you know tax on that income um, now, ultimately, I was managed to square that away because I showed them that it was just a product that was for self and not for profit and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we managed to square it away ultimately. But that scared me. And so I wanted to set up PT and do it as a business. And of course, businesses need profits, so blah, blah, blah. And there was, a, there was a lot of rhetoric at the time that I shouldn't expect to make a profit, that I should expect to put a lot of my own money into PT. And if it didn't work, that was on me. And to be fair, I have put a lot of money in. Um... And then when you start to realize that people are making a profit, like when I first started, when I quit my job at the bank and I started to do this full time, I was already doing it full time, but like the, as the, my only source uh, of work, I wasn't paying myself. I, I've only been paying myself uh, for a year and a month. Like literally I started to get paid in April, 2023. That was when I first started paying myself. Um, so yeah, so you know like the first three years no sorry april 22 i started paying myself two years two years in one month uh before that i ran the company for three years and didn't pay myself a penny um my staff got paid but i didn't and there was this whole thing you should make money jay you should make money jay and i actually lost some friends in the hobby because they felt that i shouldn't make any money um their their uh, target their, their their sites of this were the fact that i should do it for the benefit of the community and not for any personal gain um now, I get sent a lot of keyboards and stuff from various manufacturers for free, and we tend to give them away on stream and whatever else. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's really difficult to do something full-time with no job and no income mm. and then not take a salary. That's really, really hard, but that was the expectation. I now know, looking back on it, that that expectation was wrong, but so many people convinced me that that was the way I should be and that's the mindset I should have that I now only pay myself £11,953 a year. That's that's all I earn, £11,953. I've never taken a dividend out of the company. People accuse me of that all the time. My P60 was made public last year. I, I showed my P60 a couple of weeks ago on stream because people don't believe that that's all I make. And yeah, it's really frustrating situation to be in. You know, people don't ask Mike from Novel Keys how much he earns. And please don't go ask him because that's not what I mean. But, you know, he's he's probably earning decent money. And But for myself, there seems to be a different mindset for that. And I think that's because of how PT started, because I started it as a side of destiny and it built up slowly. Whereas companies who decided to go all in, people see it as a different thing. <clears throat> I truly believe that most of those that have the idea that vendors make 10 million a week without any work put into it. There are there are people in, in our Twitch subscribers who seem to think that I don't do any work. Um, but I'm here 120 hours a week on average. And sure, yeah, I might be doing a coffee company and stuff like that. But that's all extra time that I find. It's not detracting from what I do for PC. If you work out my hourly rate, it's less than it's less than £1.50 an hour. Like, it, it's just less than £1.50 an hour. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. Huge risks, too, with the way all group buys run. Absolutely. That's why people ran away. It wasn't because they were exit scamming half the time. They just didn't invest the money properly. And they couldn't fi finish it. So, yeah. How do people not know how businesses work? They just don't. This is why service support response times are shorter at vendors which are located in lower wage countries. Two to four people are just able to do more than one person. Yeah, like if like we looked at this years ago, my accountant suggested that we get two people full time in China to do all of our support emails and it would have cost me less than $100 a week, which is crazy. It is stupidly low. Um, I suspect it's a little bit more now. But instead, I do it all myself. Like, if you email us nine times out of ten, it will be me that replies to my emails. All the staff have access to my emails just in case they need to do anything. Uh, and sometimes it will be Mel who replies on my behalf or Sharon who replies on my behalf or even Josh. Sometimes it's even my wife in busy periods. But nine times out of ten, it's me who replies to every single customer service email. And that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um... I don't understand why you can't make a profit from a successful business you launched. You've made keyboard products more readily available and cheaper for us. That's, that was the entire plan. How is it that no other vendor has the earning hate? Well, they sure they do profit. I don't know, ladies, man. I think there's just something... Clearly, I just attract the type of people that think I shouldn't earn any money. And I suspect that this comes from... Do you know what? I, I, in fact, actually, I probably have the answer for this. Years ago, when I used to have a day job, I earned really good money. And... 
I'm not going to share the number, but it was it was really good money. Like it was significantly multiple times the UK national average, right? And I I worked hard for that money. I did a good job and I got paid well. And um, I had a certain type of lifestyle. You know, I collect classic cars and things like that. Most of which I've had before PT started. And they saw that I had that lifestyle, and they assumed that when I stopped working that I would be able to continue to have that lifestyle without taking money out of PT. And that is absolutely not the case. I had some life savings, which most of it is now in PT as an investment, which I'll probably never get back. And I've re resigned myself to that knowledge. So I suspect that's where it came from. Uh, this, this, this fact that people expected me to continue to be able to fund my lifestyle as though I was still earning what I used to earn when I worked in a financial institution. And I don't earn that money anymore. So that money isn't incoming anymore. But because they see me have these nice things that I bought when I had that income and I have no kids, no other, you know, I have a wife and that's it. I don't have any other family really apart from my brother. Um, so I have no other commitments in life apart from what I want to choose to spend my money on. Uh, you know, the whole uh, double income, no kids kind of thing is it, it, it's true. And I had that position. So I suspect it grew out of that. People saw me have, you know, the Datsun um, and drive that around in the nice weather and whatever else. And they just jump. Jay doesn't need to make money out of PT. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. Do you have any other businesses beyond Prototypist and the Roastery? No, just those two. I do have, I do, I am invested in some other businesses locally. Um, just, just from a kind of like personal perspective, because I believe in those businesses or I wanted to help friends out at the time or whatever. Um, but I don't, I'm not named on any other businesses. No. Um, and I don't really get an income from those. Like it's, it's, it's like, you know, at most it's a couple hundred quid. Yeah, I probably make more on streaming. And I don't make much on streaming. So, yeah. I think UPT have already done more than enough for the community to warrant a business existence than charging simply cost prices. As one simple example, uh, affording us the opportunity to enter single group buys as a company and as a human, you are the most open and honest I've come across. Speaking on behalf of everyone here, we appreciate that hugely. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. The 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 openness is because, you know. A long time ago when I started PT, we had people who would try and detract from the company say, oh, the workshop isn't real. It doesn't exist. Jay's just making it up. Making it up. Um, and the pictures were supposedly not from me and not from the workshop. And that's why I started the Instagram stories. They were, they were literally a response to those people who claimed it was fake. And over time, they became something cathartic that I wanted to continue. So, yeah. It is what it is. Don't speak for me. You're right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Right, let's get this keyboard built done. You guys can keep asking questions, and I'll, I'll try and answer them. But I do want to actually build a keyboard today. So, switches. Um, these look like Gatoron inks. Um, these look like these were bought from our store. Uh, so let's have a look at these. This is Will's keyboard. So, Will, if you can tell me more about them. These are lubed. Ooh. Interesting. They're not tub lubed either. Whoever whoever lubed these has done a, done a good old brush job. They're pretty good. Not filmed. Unless they're clear films and I can't see it. Pretty sure they're not filmed. No. Lo oh, they are filmed? Is there a film in there? I can't see it on that one. Maybe it's just that switch that I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, okay. Clear films. I can see it now. Where is it on this one? Look, 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 guys. Look. There is, there is no film on this switch. There is no film on that switch. <laughs> that, come on camera please. This switch does not have a film on it, look. You can see that. There is no film in that switch. <laughs> there is on that one. Okay. Do you, do you want me to count out Will and find the, the ones with the films on or not? Or do you just want me to build it? Might be your connection, Moons. Lube and filled them myself. Uh, the loop feel, the loop feels good. It's fairly consistent as well. Wait, I can't find the one that I had this film in. Stop shaming you. Filming is very annoying. Right, I'm just going to build it. I'm not going to have a look. I'm not going to have a look. Sorry, well, I don't mean to shame you. Right, okay. Those are the switches we're going to use today. The stabilizers, he's chosen uh, night stabilizers, um, which we had in stock a little while ago. <sighs> Idiot question. Lubing makes sense. What does a film do? So it the 
so what filming does is when you open a switch you kind of prying uh, legs open and when you put them back together they don't necessarily close quite as tightly as before so there's the slop and play between the two halves of the switch what the film does is the film like kind of bridges that gap and makes them firm again and it also affects sound um so sometimes people do it for sound sometimes people do it for to stop wobble within the switch inherent within the switch framed hey man good to see you. getting the films off the sticker sheet can be a pain it can be so let's grab this down here and let's put them in there okay so that's what we're uh, building today in terms of keyboards there was I, I don't know if you saw what I just brushed off of here then but um well there was um there was some crumbs on this <laughs> probably when I when I got your little free gift and I opened it and I uh, I ate it above the book perhaps um so this is uh KB Defense Climb Blue which is what we're going to be putting on the set on the board today this is a great set in stock currently at PT you can pick it up it's pretty cheap it's a really really nice set it's just a lovely lovely blue Uh, well, if you want to shill for Otopia and chat, feel free. And then here is the keyboard we're building. There's a nicer kit on the bottom tray, by the way. Nice. Right, Will, you need to let me know, actually, uh, how you want this building. So this is uh, in a monarchy K case. I think you did leave me a note, but I don't have it to hand. So if you let me know in chat how you want it building in terms of layout, we'll have a look at it. And then in here we have JST cable and daughter boards. We have some assembly instructions. We have some foams, silicone foams. Yeah, well, you're going to need to be very active in chat here right now. Because you're going to need to let me know all the details on how you want this building. I'm glad you're here, because otherwise I'd have to go and look for it. And here's the keyboard itself. You heard the bass boost? Look at this colour, look at that blue. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Standard ISO layout, please, with all the foams. All the foams, indeed. Okay, we can do that. Climb will go hard on this. It really, really will. Like, you don't even know. It's going to look so good. Just make sure we've got everything out of the back case here. I think PCB and plate are in here. There we go. So we have got the solder PCB. Do you want the step to full caps look, uh, Will? Let me know on that front. And we've got the MX plate here. This is the polycarbonate plate. Looks mint greeny on the main cam. It looks greeny on the on which cam? On the on the overhead cam or the face cam? It's pretty blue. The only thing that might look a bit greeny is these because you've got the light behind you might be seeing like the green reflection off of the the prototype is sign at the, at the behind, behind us if i come to the face camera like where i'm where my body's hiding it uh like oh there there look you can see we get the flash of green off the light so there you go you can see it is white yeah you, you're right you might be able to see like uh the, the light behind us probably gives us a bit of a flow of color Fun fact, Jay came and visited Utopia a month or so back to see where the flat trips were made. I did. I had a quick look at front office and met your dad. I did, yeah. Full caps. Yeah, that's what he does for a living. When I said he made keyboards, he was so confused. Then he saw the Audi and said, we need to pivot our business. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I bought the, I, the Audi did not come from PT money. Like, just being completely frank. Um, that was a personal purchase. I'm just going to take the keyboard apart. And you'll see that it does have the uh, magnets with the socks on. So I'm just going to put the socks back on here. These are a really good idea, actually. I wish we'd thought of this for the J02, actually. So 
So the case is magnetic, it just comes apart. There's the nice big connector on the rear, and we'll show you what that's for first. Let's put the top case down. So the first thing we're gonna do before we actually start building the PCB and plate assembly is we are gonna install the door to board and get that all tickety booted away. Those green in green bags, yeah. You might be seeing Otopi oh, Flapjacks in Center Parks too. Nice, nice. Have some screws. Have a door support and JST. And then we have a little packet as well. Let's see what's in here. Ah, we have the battery. So the battery is gonna sit in the little, little slot just there. Uh, what I am going to do, Will, is just, just for security, I'm not going to include the battery in the build. I'm going to leave it in its box, and I'm going to let you install that when you get it, if that's okay. Um, I'm just very, very conscious about batteries having power in them when we ship them, that's all. So, yeah, small battery, yeah. I think it does, I think there is a bit of foam, if I remember rightly, that actually packs it nice and neatly in this area here. Um, so just in there, but just from a safety point of view, I don't like shipping them with power in them. You prefer that? Yeah, cool, thanks. Things. Normally I would have just done it and told you afterwards why we'd done it that way, but you're here, so I can ask you, or I can tell you. Yeah, I think there is a silicon sleeve for it. So JST cable, nice and simple. The last thing I want is to get something with a battery because I've been using the keyboard for an hour to test it and uh, it has an issue so here we go this is the door to board itself pretty sure it goes the right way up here so let's uh, let's get this screwed into place grab some screwdrivers I think this is the size we need. Oh, it's Torx. Nice. Need to go a little bit smaller than that. There we go. I'm just gonna tighten this down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one screw in first, just so we can still move the part around. You see it's got a little bit of play. And then we'll put the second one in. We can make sure it's fully aligned as we tighten it down. And then we can go back and tighten the first one down. We're not trying to go too hard here, we're just trying to hold the part in place, we're not trying to kill it or anything else, so that's the plan here. There we go. And let's screw it in place. It's the neon green, yeah. Let's put the, uh, the JST cable in. I assume this only goes one way. I had the wrong end, that's why. One second guys, my phone's ringing. Apologies about that, guys. I just ended up getting a phone call, so I had to answer that really quickly. Okay, so, uh, just installing the... Uh, do a spinny thing on the ball bearing. Sure. Just for you. There you go. That's a spinny thing on the ball bearing for you. <laughs> Let's get the uh, the JST cable plugged in here. Come on. Maybe I should have installed the JST cable first. Come on. 
there we go JST cable installed so now we've got that bit built now it's all looking nice and good we will be the vendor for the v2 play train yeah justin's just waiting for some revised uh prototypes to arrive yeah the new one has a lid okay one thing i didn't notice unless it's in the phone pack is where the feet are so let's take a look let's see if we can find the feet for the board here i know my i180 looks great with sa ramses nice can you recommend keycap boards where keycap set a bit deeper i have a set Animal. Uh, the T9 group by that's live right now. Um, if you look at the T9, it has really deep set keycaps. If you remind me at the end of the stream, I'll show you. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, we have the, the, the gaskets to sit on the plate. That's useful. I'll put these to one side. We have the feet, which is what I'm looking for. And we do have the silicone sock for the battery as well. So we'll leave that installed in the case, but yeah, that fits in nicely. But we won't actually uh, use that directly. We'll let the battery be put in later on. And the feet actually go in the top case, but on the bottom of it. So let's put the feet in now. You know, Monarchy are getting so much right here with the, the way they're doing stuff these days. Mm, they fit really well. Pressure fit feet. I like a lot. We actually did some of the PT feet with a variant like this. Josh has been testing them out. So it's nice to see other people are coming with similar ideas. Uh, this is a Monarchy K that we're building today, but we've got it. We've if we if we have time, we actually have potentially a couple of customer builds we could do. Um, I think I have five that are ready to be built right now. So I need to try and catch up this week. Okay, that's the feet all installed, looking good. And then here we have the switch foam. It's more silicon than foam. And then of course we have the internal foam for the bottom of the case as well, which we can leave like that. Anonymous biker, hey man, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Okay, so first things first, let's get our stabilizers all lubricated up. So Will, uh, I hope you're still watching. You said you wanted standard ISO. Do you want to go with the 6.25 U bottom row or the 7 U bottom row? Um, I do need to know that for this build. Um, let's put together the stabilizers. So for standard ISO, we'll have full backspace. ANSI, uh, sorry, ISO enter, not ANSI, ANSI enter, uh, and plus the space bar for, for this particular build. 6.25, we can do that, not a problem at all. So we'll need six housings and six inserts. Six housings, let's get six inserts out. Unless it's bolted bow blockers. Um, I think it depends. Like I've I've seen loads of people built in both ways, and I, I don't think there's I have a dislike of seven U on a on a sixty five percent. Forgotten how much I like these night stabilizers. Okay. 
Okay, time to grab some lube and a brush. Oh, I forgot to put the captions on. What an idiot. Um, okay, so the captions should be working now, guys. I apologize for that. I, I had meant to put them on earlier and I completely forgot. Let me know if they, they're working. Where did my brush go? There it is. There it is. Lost the brush for a second. <clears throat> Why the night steps so much better than others? I think they're my second favorite stabilizer. I like the QMX ones best. But I think night steps are probably my second favorite. So what we're doing here guys is just putting some lubricant on the wire itself where it goes into the housing and we're just putting a nice amount on remember it's always easier to add more lube later than it is to remove it so just go with a nice even amount and if you need to tune it later on you can do cc's working by the way thank you thank you i need to remember to put that on at the start of every stream there we go, that's one side done. Do the next side. That's the first stabilizer wires looped. I'm just gonna lube the sides of the slider rails here just very, very lightly. So I'm just gonna paint on a very, very thin amount of lube. Again, we're not trying to gum the stabilizer up here. We're just trying to get it to tasty, work nicely. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Test you not. Thank you so much for the subscription. We are now at 211 subs towards our target of 225. When we hit that target of 225 subs, we will be giving away some GMK on stream. We give away three GMK sets, so make sure you're ready for that. And we're just going to put a small amount of lube just in the rear as well, just to make sure that that wire remains lubricated over time. There we go. That's one stabilizer done. Time now to do our ISO enter and our backspace. It is a PC plate, yeah. <clears throat> you could trim the plate if you needed to, but some people don't like to do that kind of modification. Especially if there's like an, an out of box solution for it. hope you guys have all got your tickets for the UK meetup. I did get a really, really interesting email from an anonymous person the other day from a, uh, a newly created email address that was, uh, or one of these disposable email addresses, uh, requesting that I do not attend the, the meetup because I will make their, my presence will make them feel uncomfortable. I don't know why, but they didn't elaborate on that. Um, but they'd get a nice email from someone. <laughs> I'm going to assume because they didn't tell me who they are that it was a joke, but you never know. But I hope you are all are coming to the meetup because I'll be there. Copilot and Crybat. It's not the kind of thing I reply to. It's just I just found it funny. Um, but it was one of these. Um, well, I mean, I think if I'd replied to it anyway, I wouldn't have. They wouldn't have got it because it was one of these like uh, temporary emails, like a burner email. It's way too much. Like, what are you doing, Jay? But it's, it's just funny. 
blind them with beauty dude i am i am not a pretty person to look at i i am well aware of that i'm a fat middle-aged man that's probably a little bit too short and open to a fault so i'm not uh I don't know but yeah apparently i would intimidate them so they they asked if i could not attend the the meetup but unfortunately pt is going so i have to attend the meetup i can't i can't not um which is just one of those things the throw, throw me all the heck that they called yeah it's um it's like a disposable or a, a burner email um I actually quite like the look of the burner email company and I'm, I'm going to be using them. So if nothing else, they put me onto a really good burner email service. I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head, but um, if I remember, I'll, uh, I'll shout it out in chat. But it looked pretty good. I sound like your girlfriend. I, I, I don't think I'm particularly feminine sounding, but okay. I don't mind if I'm... A little bit feminine. I mean, I'm wearing a pink hoodie. Actually, guys, I have a really, really cool appointment on Thursday. Um, and this is going to make me make me sound uh, uh, a little bit weird because I'm nearly 40, and it's not kind of like the type of thing that I usually do. But my wife for our wedding anniversary, which is tomorrow. Uh, oh crap! That reminds me. I need to get a card. Um, for my wedding anniversary tomorrow on Thursday, she's sending me for a, a manicure and a pedicure, and I'm really excited about it because I've never had either so I'm really really excited about it you thought I was 20 yeah whatever whatever so without a doubt you're handsome and acting not like you like you're not I, I mean I'm not particularly but thank you I'm, I'm very aware that I'm average. I'm very aware that I'm average. Right, okay, so let's get these stabilizers installed and then we'll screw them in. I'm not sure if these will hold into the PCB or if we'll have to hold them manually. I think we're going to have to hold these in. Yeah, we're going to have to hold these in. So let's get the screws ready. No one thought I was 20. Like, like that's, that's just you pandering for a discount, isn't it? That's just you saying, Jay, give me a discount and I'll be nice to you. I know, I know how it goes. Let that go. I just threw the... Hope there's a spare. I just threw the little O-ring on myself. Hand model pictures on the website soon. I have awful hands, actually. Um, I have these really short, stubby fingers. Um, so I don't have particularly good hands for, for modeling stuff. Um, but this, that's the reason why my nails are really long at the minute, because I'm going for a manicure and a pedicure. I wanted to let, let them have enough material to work with on, to shape on my nails and stuff. So, um, yeah. How's my day going? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 39 as well. I'm 40 next. And it's getting it's getting really close. It's getting really close. Um, yeah, it's been a good day. I've I've actually been doing some interesting things as well as packing orders today as well. Not that like seeing what you guys have bought isn't interesting, but I've um, I've been playing with uh, Zapier to kind of like organize some stuff. Um, uh, and I'm also looking at another bit of software as well. I think it's called Paddle, which is very very similar but cheaper. Um, whilst I'm still in the trial version of Zapier because it's expensive when you need as many integrations and functions as I do. Um, but like for, for Jay's Roastery, because it's a new company, I wanted to set up like some, like because it should be really, really easy. There's no VAT because it's just coffee, which is VAT free and stuff like that. I wanted to like automate some spreadsheets from the sales from stuff. I'll show you, I'll show you. It's, like, it's, e it's easier if I show you guys this. So what I wanted to do, um, on Zapier was like whenever there's a new order on the website I wanted it to post to my Vesta board which was nice and easy that's done so this one's uh, here so um, every time there's a new order in Shopify it sends a message to the Vesta board and it will say um, 
coffee nerd alert uh the customer's first name has just ordered whatever the coffee is and we do this already for uh pt orders on the vesta board so that was nice and easy um but the other thing i wanted to do was automate um like a output to a where, where is it gone it was on here hold on hold on where is it hmm so i put i don't want to show you the prototype ones because there's a load in there um Hmm. Anyway, I was basically trying to have it output to a spreadsheet every time we had a new sale, but only the information that we needed. Because if we pull it from the Shopify API direct, like we do for PT, there's a whole raft of information that we don't need. So I wanted to try and do it a little bit easier. Um, I did create it earlier on. I don't know why it's not there. I wonder if I've saved it on the prototypes keyboards one, and I don't want to show you that because there's a load in there that I can't show you. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll figure it out. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do that on stream at some point. Coffee adds no value, yeah. Coffee is VAT free and keyboard is not, yeah. Yeah, coffee is a VAT free zone. Uh, only if we sell it as whole beans. If we sell it as like um, uh, ground beans, then there is a, a fee that we don't have to charge VAT uh, because we're applying a service to it at that point. Oh, show my work mate your coffee. I think she's gonna buy some. Nice, nice. Uh, tell her to join the Discord and let me know what she thinks, because um, we have like a whole coffee set up on the Discord now. Coffee is essential. I think it's essential. Like I couldn't live without coffee. I really couldn't. Um, so yeah. Keyboards are also no value add. Uh, Okay, there we go. That's that bit done. Now what we can do is we can install the foam. So this is actually silicone layer that sits between it. it, it we'll probably call it plate foam on the stream, but it's not, it's, it is it is silicone. And it's designed to sit really nicely around the plate. So it actually connects into the plate in a number of different areas. Um, if you can see here, there's like a raised nodule and there's a couple of other ones dotted around on the plate, uh, on the, on the, um, silicone well the, the plate actually connects into those areas so we can get everything really nicely aligned he says in fact you know what i'm going to do i'm actually going to do this slightly differently i'm going to put this together first and hopefully it will hold itself enough for me to flip it over. Nice, nice. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop a couple of switches in first. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push these into the plate and hopefully they're gonna clip into the PCB as well. Just check we've not burnt any pins on it. And we're gonna use a couple of those just around the center and one in each corner to just hold it all together. Just to make sure everything's nice and solid and in place. Why does that not want to align? There we go. So what we're basically doing here is we're using the switches to kind of clip everything together and hold everything together. And then as we solder these couple of switches in place, it's going to kind of like uh, tie everything down. Oh, interesting. I think we would have had to go 6.25U anyway, because the plate is fixed on these three positions here, which probably wouldn't work with a 7U space bar. Let's just put the whole bottom row in and then we can start to put the rest of the switches in. Does the additional layer stop plate flex? No, it's designed more for sound. Like if I if I flex this now, we'd still have some flex in there, it'd still move. Uh, but it's more for sound. 
<sighs> Any idea when you might have some more color samples from GMK? Uh, yeah, we have some on order. I don't know how long they're going to be, but we'll we'll hopefully get them in soon. You wouldn't be able to tolerate people and work with that coffee. I hear that. Wait, is that my uh, is that my door? Did you guys hear a buzzing or a bleeping? Let me just check that you wait the UPS isn't here. Give me one second, guys. I'm just going to check that UPS hasn't arrived. Okay, they're not here yet, but... <laughs> They'll, they'll buzz the door, but I don't always hear them when I've got my headphones on. So, yeah, I ha li listen out for like a loud banging or like a an internal buzzer, guys. And let me know if you hear it, like ASAP. Because there's a load of stuff that I don't want to miss uh, UPS today because there's a load of stuff ready to go. What switches? These are Black Inks V2. You like a zombie without your first coffee of the day? Me too. Like... Uh, I suspect Mel could tell you how much of a difference there is in my behaviour. The person doing it, how... Uh, wait, what? When did you have your last pedicure? When I said this is my first time ever, I could read in her face. She was thinking, that makes perfect sense. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> when I wake up, my wife knows the first thing is coffee, then her. Fair. Fair. My wife does complain on a weekend when the first thing I do is go to the coffee machine and put it on. What keep are we building? This is a KV2, uh, which, which interestingly, Will didn't buy from PT, despite us being the UK retailer for them. No comment. <laughs> I got my uh, GMK Tick R2 Galaxy today. Really happy with it. So nice. Yeah, they're lovely keys, aren't they? They really are nice. It's not a community made board, but would you consider stocking the Kinesis Advantage 360? Um, we did look at that in the past, but like there's no margin on them. Um, like the the current suppliers get such a good price on them because we didn't offer different top and bottom case colors. Um, yeah, we weren't allowed to. You wanted full capsule. Blasphemy. Yeah. My girlfriend is looking for some really silent switches. What would you recommend? I don't think we have any silent switches in stock. I would have said the corals because they were really good. Um, but I don't think we have any silent switches in stock right now. Um, let me have a look. Let me try and have a look. Uh, in stock switches, what have we got? Yeah, we, I'm, I'm trying to sell out of as many switches as I can. So I wish I could sell you something, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Um, yeah, we don't have anything that's particular silent in stock right now. But we will have some silent switches in stock at a later date. It's just going to be a little while away uh, when we do our actual overall switch restock. Our larger switch restock. Because uh, we're going to try and have like a curated selection in. <laughs> you got to spread the love. <laughs> if you buy this from us, Monarchy still get paid. Like <laughs> That's just the sad facts. You got the Texi uh, safety switches. They're actually really good. Yeah, there was just no margin on the 360. Like if we offered it, like it, like wholesale prices and the, the amounts were just obscene as well. Like we'd have to buy such a volume that they'd be sat on the shelf for so long. We'd never sell them all and we'd end up having to sell them at some discount or some loss. So it just wasn't a very good product for us. Uh, updates are all on the website. Um, bear in mind it was a bank holiday weekend, so and most of the team are actually off this week. Uh, Mel's not back until Wednesday, and Sharon's not back until Friday, uh, just because it's like uh, May bank holiday. Um, so yeah, uh, so just check on the updates website, and if we've got any updates, they'll be there. If not, check back in a, like a week or so, because that's when we'll probably have the next round of updates going on there properly. Okay, almost there now with the switch installation. Yeah, 
to this set, this. There is a slight issue. I'm going to show you. I'm going to finish putting these switches in. I'll show you guys what the issue is. Slight issue. I say a slight issue. It is only slight. Um. So, I don't think this is actually going to make much of a difference once we get the plate in the case. Um, and especially once we solder it because we can we can force it past it. But here in this top corner, the stabilizer actually touches where the screw part of the stabilizer is, these round vertical bits, it actually touches the plate. And you can see here that the plate isn't touching the PCB, whereas it is everywhere else. Um, and that's because it's actually compressing up against the, the plate. Can you see it's distorting the plate there a little bit? So I think it's going to be okay, because what we'll do is we'll just hold that switch down firmly whilst we're soldering into position, and it shouldn't affect anything. But if you can see now I've got the switch in, it's kind of like lifting it from here all the way across. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to be really force that switch in whilst we solder it. Uh, both of those switches, just really force them to hold it flush like this, because when we let go, it kind of lifts away. It's only a fraction out, but yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. Have you ever tried echo switches? Yeah, um, not enough to sell them, I'm afraid. You said a color scheme plan for this it was the cheapest way to do it. I understand that. I understand. Um, luckily, as well, we don't need to use the uh, these on this particular board because uh, the PCB is the correct thickness. Right. Okay. Let's get our soldering iron ready. You weren't impressed with the echo switches? That's fair. I, I mean, they're fine. They're just not my cup of tea, to be honest with you. I think that's the issue. So what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to solder uh, where we've got this area of concern up in this top corner. We're just going to solder one pin. And the reason for that is we're going to solder it out of position and then we're going to reflow the solder whilst we hold it in position. Um, and just until we get it nice and nice and tight. I'm just going to solder that pin just like so. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up that pin and I'm going to hold everything together at the place where it needs to meet. And then I'm going to let that solder solidify and use that to hold everything in place. I'm going to do the same on the second pin. Just make sure we're getting it all fully even. Okay, let's do the same in the corners and then we'll do two in the middle. Just want to make sure this is all fully fully correct. And then we'll do a check for bent pins as well. So I'm just going to come over to this corner. doing is I'm just reflowing the solder whilst I'm holding the switch in its correct position so that everything goes as nice and tight as possible. And then once we've got the switches in the corners done, I'm going to tackle that backspace switch and do a couple in the center of the PCB and then we should be able to solder just nice and easily along. That's all that done. Let's do a couple in the center first actually. So again, just one pin for a switch in the center. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically compress that switch into the PCB as much as possible. You might hear that little click. That's just it being compressed into place properly. Let's do one more in the center as well. And then we're going to go with 
fix that backspace switch properly. So we'll solder one pin. And then what we're going to try and do is eliminate that gap that's between the PCB and the plate that's that to as greater extent as possible. So we're going to reheat that. We're going to push that all the way in. And then that should provide us a really strong mechanical connection for the other side. Now, yeah, this is going to put some force on the switch over time, but it's not going to be huge amounts. And then to just really seal that in place, we're just going to do the switch next to it. And again, exactly the same process. Solder one pin, heat that pin up, push the switch fully into place. You might hear it click. Let the solder set, hold that in place properly. And then we can do the other pin as well. Incredible. Thank you so much, Red Eats, for the, uh, the follow. I appreciate that. Pine 64 is awesome. Yeah, it's a pine still is this, yeah. Same soldering iron, it's great. Can run off a battery pack. Yeah, I prefer to run it off the power. What's the best soldering iron for the first time? I do prefer the TS-100. This is fine, but my TS-100 lasted like five years. I used it for a long time. And then it finally broke a little while back. Um, so I'm a little bit upset that it broke, but it is what it is. Right, before we go any further, I'm just gonna double check for bent pins. And I'm just gonna try and push every switch into the plate and PCB assembly a little bit further, just so that I'm aware that everything is correct and holding in properly. And we're just checking for bent pins and holding everything together. Incredible. Okay, everything looks good actually. Couple of switches in some areas that might just need a little bit more force on them, but I think we're okay. So I'm just going through, checking for bent pins now. Tasty, okay. tasty. The bottom row probably needs a little bit of attention as we solder those in place, but everything else looks good. Okay, let's put a switch in space actually before we uh, get any further. I wasn't going to do it until the end, but I don't want to forget. And then I can solder that particular one in as well, just before we go any further. You can reuse the TS100 tips with the pine still, right? Yes, you can. The V2 short tips are better than the long ones. I prefer the longer ones. I, I like the length of them. The shorter ones feel a little bit um, short for me. I'm not as fast with this soldering iron either. Like with the TS100, I just felt so much more confident. But that's just a, a practice thing. Like you use the tools you use. Sorry, the music pauses when my uh, when my phone rings. I apologize for that. Is it powered by USB C? Am I tripping? You can power it by USB C. I've got it plugged into the the mains, but you can power it by USB C if you want to. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you so much for whoever that was following. I missed that. Thank you so much. If you guys have got any more questions as well, now's a good time to ask them. While I'm soldering, I can kind of answer any questions you guys might have about running PT or the new coffee company or anything else and still get away with soldering nicely. I remember you recommended a desoldering station, not the desoldering gun. How is that different from a solder station in your view? 
so the desoldering stations are like a heated pad that you can just heat up the whole thing and uh, remove components. They're really good for stuff like replacing chips and stuff like that. Um, for switches and other things, they're probably a little bit overkill and they probably damage your switches to be honest because they'll make your switches melt. But they're really good for surface mount components. Um, like a desoldering gun is fine. Uh, there's two types. One's where the pump is built into the gun itself and one's where it's built into like a, a station at the side. I actually gave two of those away quite recently. Um, the ones with the station in. One to Tinkerton and one to, I think it was, was it maybe JQ or something else? Um, I can't remember exactly who it was. Um, but they're actually really, really good. Better than the gun versions. I do have the Hako, but I'm not a fan of it. I prefer the the ones with the the base station. The, the pumps are more powerful. You can have a bigger pump for the airflow in a station than you can do in the handle. So how do I plug it into the mains? It's just a, a laptop charger, but it it, it it heats up in like. 10 seconds it's not it doesn't take it's like even less than that it's probably like five or six seconds it heats up in expecting UPS to turn up so I have to take a quick break whenever they do arrive what are we building we're building a uh, kv2 here today so I'm just gonna do the iso enter but I'm gonna do the trick of soldering one pin pushing the uh, switch in fully and then letting the, uh, the second the pin heat up and cool down so it holds it in place properly gives it a mechanical connection just so that we were uh, making sure there's a good connection there. Okay, now we're going to start on the caps lock and work our way across that row. but I don't think I could do the USB port. It's not too difficult to do, isn't the USB port? Um, if you've got flux, it's pretty easy. You just need plenty of flux to be able to do it, really. Like, if I can do it, I'm not the best solderer. I'm competent, but I'm not the best. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Like, if I can learn how to do anything, to be honest, anyone can do it. I am not a smart cookie. Like any new skill, it's all based around practice as well. So if you uh, if you can build a gingham, you can basically solder anything. Like that's, that's it's a really good litmus test for for soldering skill is a gingham. If you can, if you can build one, you can build anything. Like one hundred percent. You have some uh, key opinions queued up with Mr. Black Simon later. Latest I see group by review as popularized by Top Pack way back when. Yeah, I mean, we did the the um, Top Clack group by reviews for like a long time on Top Clack. Um, that was kind of like our staple from when I was on there for like three or four years. 
um, and it be, Top Crack was going for a long time. We just fell out of love of doing it, and it was just really hard to keep going when designers just um, complained if you spoke about things. They complained if you gave it a bad review. Um, they complained if you didn't, if you missed something. They complained if you talked about other people doing similar things. Um, and it was just, it was just like a really negative drain doing that kind of thing. Simon's got a great mentality for it though, because he just wouldn't give a toss if someone had an opinion on what he'd said. He'd be like, okay, that's that's fine, but I'm entitled to my opinion. Um, whereas Brian and I are a bit more um, susceptible to that kind of feedback, I suspect. How do you desolder? I looked at a gun and it's 500 quid. Um, like the, the one that I use is the one from RS Components. Um, and it's just a desoldering base station. I think it's like 80 quid. It's like red, but they do a blue one as well. I gave a blue one away as well. It's like a blue and black base station with a blue and black gun or a red and black base station with a red and black gun. Um, okay, I think I've still got a couple of switches to put in this as well. So I think we need to do left shift still. So we'll do those in a second, but we're pretty much there with the soldering now. Pretty much there. Force a switch in here that I'm not a fan of doing. So the switch here for left shift doesn't want to sit inside because the where the switch clips in, so where the pin clips in for the switch just here, the hole isn't quite big enough to hold the switch. So what we're going to do is again a little trick with soldering one pin holding the correct position um, whilst it cools Incredible. down and that should give us the mechanical advantage so we're just gonna hold that in place let the solder set and that should hold it there we go Tasty, tasty. Tasty, tasty. Thank you so much, Disc, for the subscription. It's a little bit closer to our uh, 225 sub count. Thank you very much for that. Don't forget, if we hit the 225 sub count, we will be giving away some uh, GMK sets on stream. Okay, so that's our soldering done. It's all nice and tidy. Uh, no, the, the office is so open and so big that I don't feel like I need a fume extractor in here. There we go. So that's all of our switches in place. They're all nice, neat, and even. <clears throat> Next job is to install the gaskets, and these just sit on top of these tabs. You can actually buy these in uh, multiple different colors as well. Just don't know if the fumes directly. Yeah, I mean, like for most things, you're not going to be getting the, the the solder hot enough to melt the lead particularly and create lead fumes because like you'd have to go like stupidly high heat for that 
Um, but yeah, you just don't want to huff it in. Like that's that's a bad idea. Okay, so that's the gasket slots applied. We're just going to put this on the rear. This is for the USB port, just to make it nice and clean. Uh, this just sits on the rear of the case. Just like so, just pushes in like so. And then what we can do is we can flip this over. We can pop it in the case. Make sure everything lines up nice and neatly. Wait, did I put that back to front? I did. I put it in back to front. It would help if we got the right orientation, Jay. Just make sure everything is going to fit correctly, going to line up correctly. We're not going to have any issues. That's looking good. Okay. Next job then is to bring the base back in. And remember, we're not connecting the battery today, but the battery does sit in the silicone sock just there. We're going to let the end user do that when they get the board later on. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the JST port to the PCB. Just like so. I'm going to make sure that cable lays down nicely and we're just going to drop the assembly down where it should sit. Just make sure that it is in the slot. There we go. That's looking good. Then we're going to take the top case and we're just going to pop that down over the top and that should then snap together and align everything for us. And we've just pulled the on the wrong way. Perhaps I've got it in the wrong way around. put it in from the wrong side of the case. There we go. And there we go. You see it snaps together nicely. And then we have the keyboard assembled. Manu, I can't come to Mechanicon because uh, because the MKUK meetup is on the same day. So I can't be in two places at once, sadly. Ready off disc? No worries. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate you. And thank you again for the subs. Royston is an irritant though? Yeah, it can be. What are your thoughts on rubber hose? Where you have to buy your place to get something else? Um, It happens in a lot of industries, right? Like, it, it, it's, it's just a new marketing opportunity and seeing how something works in the keyboard space. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but yeah. It's, um, if you don't like it, don't support it. That's as simple as that. Like, with stuff like this, it's really easy to say, oh, I don't like the fact that you have to buy this to get that. Um, but it, it's it's often the, the way of these things. Like if, if, if it was sold as a bundle, which was the original plan, um, you know, it wouldn't be that you're buying one thing to get access to another. It's that you have to buy them together to get them. So that's just the way it is sometimes. I'm just going to pop the keys on now and then we'll test the keyboard. I'm just keeping an eye out for... Um, Oh wait, we're going to use the UK icon. Okay, so we'll skip those for now. Um, I can't remember what I was saying now. I was talking about something. Vote your wallet, simple as that. Yeah, Jay might find some random squelchy overloop switches in there. Well, you only gave me one spare switch, so if there is one, I can't change it. <laughs> it's looking good already. We'll test the PCB once we've got these all in. You'll have to let me know, Will, as well, what keys you'd like down the side here. <sighs> uh, 
uh, vote with your wallet. Yeah, although with this particular thing, it won't affect it since it's so popular. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like with the Jane and the uh, Kahaku, um, if we'd have ran the group by for all of them and said, you can only get the keyboard if you buy it with the key set or it comes as a bundle, no one would have batted an eyelid. It's only because it's happening a little bit later. The like theoretically, we're still sell selling it as a bundle. It's just there's a time delay between the bundle being available, right? That's all it is. That's the way to look at this. This set looks so good on this keyboard already. Hi, Jane, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well, man. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. left shift switch actually i may have to go back and change that I, i'm just not happy with it i think it's going to leave the keycap that slightly wonky so i'm going to have to have a look at that in a minute and perhaps i need to desolder that switch and re-put it back in but we'll we'll take a look at that shortly oh wait we are fixed here but that's not a 1.25 u key that is a 1.5 u key interesting so how does that make you build this? Wait, what? I don't think this is gonna work. This... This, uh... This plate is fixed for the bottom row. Apart from the spacebar area. This bottom row is fixed, okay, on the plate, it's fixed. So you can see here that the uh, the switch here, and the same for these ones, only have one slot they can go. We can't adjust the switch spacing here, but it's 1.51, 1.5, which means that the 6.25U is cl too close to it. We're going to have to change the stabilizer and put in the 7U one. Like, we can't do this any other way. You can't have with this plate a 6.25U spacebar. Yeah, it's, it's sorry, Will, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to fix that off stream, I'm afraid. I'm not going to have time to do it today. But, um, well, well, we'll build it as best we can for now. Um, but it's going to have to have the seven new space bar in there, yeah. That is, is what we're going to have to do, I'm afraid. Uh, you couldn't build this side either. There isn't the space on the, on the PCB to do it. My bad, Jay. Should have noticed that. It's my fault. I should have noticed myself, dude. Like, don't don't blame yourself. It's me. I should have noticed it. Um, let's let's keep building the rest of the keyboard because it's still going to look great. Oops. Come on. There we go. Uh, where are the arrow keys? There they are. We can we can get a view of what it's going to look and sound like, and then I'll just fix this later on. It's probably going to be tomorrow before I fix it though. I should have realized when I was putting it together. I thought it felt wrong and I didn't question it. I just carried on and assumed it was okay. Turns out that's not the case. Um, I'm going to let you pick what you want here, but I'm just going to put some keycaps in for now, um, just that fit the correct profiles, and let you decide what you want later on. I just saw these and I quite like them. I quite like the idea of having different shaped arrows of that side. So let's go with that for now. Uh, let's find those UK ISO keys. Can I not find the right keys? There we go. Yeah, my apologies, Will, for not spotting that earlier. I, I really should have done, and I'm, I'm slightly annoyed that I didn't. Okay, the only other thing we need now... ...is the shift key that fits on this 1.25U shift, which I haven't seen yet, actually. 
Is there no 1.25 your shift? Wait, where's the shift key? Am I being blind, chat? Oh, it's that. I am being blind. I was being completely and utterly blind. There we go. Yeah, that, 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 that switch just needs a little bit of adjustment. It's not miles out, but it's like a fraction out and I notice it, so we'll fix that as well. Cool. Upside down stepped caps for all. <laughs> That's not a bad shout. So you can kind of see what this is going to look like. It's going to work really, really, really well. I do really love this key set. It looks great. So bizarre on the plate if it only half spots there. It does. Yeah, it's so weird. It looks really good. Should we see how it sounds? Let's, uh, let's see how it sounds, because I think it's going to sound pretty good. It feels like it's going to sound good. And I'll, uh, I'll get this fixed. It'll probably be tomorrow now when I fix this, but I will get it fixed. Let's pause the music. Where's the music gone? Let's pause that. Let's see what she sounds like. That sounds so good. sounds so good you you might not get this back will we, we we may not be able to ship this keyboard back to you I, th I think there might be too much damage to the uh, the PCB after we have to change the space bar um, and therefore we might not be able to send it back to you uh, I'm afraid I'm really sorry about that let's 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 just do a, a quick switch here, a test to make sure everything's working um, and then of course, if you need us to configure it as well, well, just let us know how you want it configuring and we'll be able to do that too. Wait. Oh, did we not flick the PCB on? <laughs> I didn't turn the PCB on. Okay. That's, that's slightly frustrating. This is the new one. Wait, is there a switch for the PCB? Hold on. Hold on. Hold the door. Let's just uh let's just have a look here. What was the issue with the spacebar? The uh, the the plate and the PCB support different things and um during the build will ask me to use 6.25U space and it doesn't support 6.25U space with the layout that he wants. So we're gonna have to change it for a 7U space. Let's, uh, let's just try this again. Make sure there's no blink pins. Okay, so we've got power for a second there.
does it require the battery it shouldn't require the battery we can we can try that oh, let's let's try that let's try putting the battery and see if it does actually need the battery to complete the circuit uh rob the, the the typing sound is from a so many different factors it's impossible to put it down to one uh even down to the room that you're in will change the the way the sound is um I can't imagine that it will need the, the battery in it to perform. Perhaps it does, perhaps I'm wrong. Come on. I hate doing these on camera. Like normally when I'm on my own, I have no issue at all with JST cables. But as soon as I try and do them on stream. Try and get into wired mode now. Surely, you button press to put it into wired mode. This piece that was the device is not recognized. Hmm. Hmm. Tasty. GVB, tasty. thank you so much for the subscription. Hmm. Typing sound mainly from the, yeah, we talked about that. Uh, Foam's case, switch is a place. Yeah, switches are not the biggest contribution to, yeah. I, like so many th things affect it. Okay, so we have the, we have the, uh, everything plugged in here, but for some reason, it just does not want to type. Hmm. Let's uh, let's see if there's the controls here for it somewhere. Let's have a look and see if it's just a, like a control thing. Let's have a look. Uh, I need to use the paper something. Let's have a look. Let me share my screen so you guys can see. This is the, uh, the build guide. We're not doing the EC build guide. Let's have a look. Top case, bottom case, yep, yeah, okay. How to build your keyboard, yeah, we put the feet in. Come on, why are you not loading? the PCB to the Bluetooth door board, yep. Yeah. Using the supply BTDB cable, yep. Yeah. Press the Bluetooth button once to enter wired mode. Which is the Bluetooth button? Which is the Bluetooth? It doesn't tell me which the Bluetooth button is. It doesn't tell me. Bluetooth LED would be on this side, okay. Which means that if this is going into the case, it's gonna be one of these buttons. So how do we put it into wired mode? Come on. Press it once. If you cable, it could be the cable, it could be the door support as well. There have been issues with them. Let's plug it back in.
So that should be wired mode because it's now flashing. But if we load up switch hitter, um, switch hitter just doesn't seem to want to detect it. Hmm. Oh wait, you guys can't see switch hitter, can you? Let me add switch hitter. Do, do, do. it's not letting me add it so there's something wrong here um yeah for some reason it doesn't like it it's on the right hand case right hand side of the case okay the usb device is not recognized the last usb device you connected to this computer malfunction and windows does not recognize it so it doesn't like wired mode it just does not like wired mode at all I wonder if this needs the firmware flashing. Yeah, we're just getting no output from it. USB devices not recognized. Hmm. Okay, let's um let's just disconnect that from there for a second. And disconnect that from there. Now it could be the cable. Um or it could be a sign of something else. I'm just gonna disconnect the battery as well. Let's take out the daughter board and see if it is the daughter board that's shorting somewhere perhaps. That's, that cable doesn't want to come out now. Let's see if it's the daughter board that's showing. Female connection needs fixing. It could be. It could be. There could be a few things here. Let's uh, let's take the daughter board out and just make sure that we're not shorting out on something inside the case. That's my uh, my first instinct here. Not doing anything so far. Press the Bluetooth button once. Nothing so far. Press and hold it, see if we can get into wide mode. It's almost like uh, it's just getting no signal at all. It just doesn't want to go into wide mode. Let's try plugging the battery back in. Okay. Still no output. Hey, we have output. Okay. So, it must have been shorting on something inside the case. <sighs> it must have been shorting on something inside the case. Let us um, let me see if I can get um, switch here up, just so you guys can see. Uh, window capture, add source, add new source, um, switch hitter, add source, window, switch hitter done okay cool right let me let me show you guys uh, what's working and what's not okay okay so into works hold on let me change switches <laughs> to an ISO layer I forgot about that right let's start again 
Okay, everything's working so far on that row. How bizarre, that was so weird. I wonder if the battery just needed to be plugged in long enough to hold enough of a charge to keep the keyboard going. That's gonna be FN. Yeah, I'm gonna get F keys that way. Cool, okay, so the whole keyboard is working. So we mentioned mine doesn't work at all, even in wide mode, and the blue and the white LEDs are just blinking, yay. I noticed that the daughter board is getting pretty hot. Checked it with the thermal camera. There's no heat coming off the, the daughter board yet. Um, yeah, I did get an email from um, KLC about that. Not KLC, Monarchy about that. So have a look at it, into it. But yeah, okay, so the, the, the keyboard is working. We just need to fix the spacebar row now. And I think it must have just been uh, in the case. It must have just been shorting out. So let's... Um, Let's disconnect that. Let's put it back into the case and let's see if we can't get it working in the case. In fact, what I'm going to do is just for the sake of a couple of millimeters, I'm going to use the stabilizer um, standoffs and I'm just going to put these underneath uh, as we put it back together. So let's uh, let's try and pop this in place. Don't need that. Uh, oh. We're gonna to have to disconnect it anyway. Just because we need to put the foam back in. Okay, so as we put this back in place, let's drop the cable in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these little tiny standoffs just underneath the screws and hopefully be able to keep them all lined up whilst I put the screws in place. Which is likely gonna be a really difficult situation. I may have to just dab these in with lube or something. But what I'm, what I what I suspect was the issue is that the battery just needed to hold enough charge to get it to output something. Be aware, yeah, aware. <clears throat> Wide only daughter board if buyers want it. Nice. I, I suspect that if you want it, I would take that. Uh, I think in our shipment, we've actually got those all coming together, so yeah. Okay, that's that bit done. Let's pop the phone back in, make sure we're not going to have anything shorting out anywhere here at all. Let's plug this back in. Plug the top case back on. Plug it back in. I'm conscious that I've stolen all of your standoffs. I suspect this is what's going to be the solution, but let's see. Plug that back in. And let's get switched here to back up. Nice. There we go. I'm not going to test everything, but there we go. You can see it's all working as intended. There we go. Cool. Panic over. 
The board does work. Okay, so next step then for us is to just fix this bottom row back to how it should be for the player. I should have checked it before. That's my fault. Uh, the amount of keyboards I built, I should have spotted it ages ago. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with that. It sounds great. It's going to look fantastic and will. I'll get this bottom row sorted out for you tomorrow and we'll get the board in the post here so you'll be able to test it out. Um, right, okay. That is pretty much it for the stream, guys. I'm going to head off now. Didn't quite make it on the sub goal today, I'm afraid, unfortunately. Uh, but if we make the sub goal on Sunday stream or if we're on Thursday stream, we'll do three GMK giveaways as soon as we hit that sub goal. Uh, we'll give away three brand new sets of, uh, of GMK. Um, I'm going to head off now, hopefully be ready to let the UPS guys in to um, collect all the packages that we've packed today. And I'll see you guys on Instagram and everywhere else over the next couple of days and back on stream on Thursday. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate every last one of you. Take care and have a really, really good rest of your Tuesday. Bye-bye.